Five minutes? Yeah. We're rolling all around. I know, but I'm like officially five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maybe not even. Maybe not even. Official five. Maybe not even. It, it, it's really up to the sound man. All right, I'm gonna use bad pro. So I don't I like to go by the without no pimping plan, you know. So right now at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. J O N, play me some pimping, man. The slutty vegan ladies here. The slutty vegan ladies here. That's what we got hey. going on today. That's a bomb intro. Fuck with that. The slutty vegan ladies here. That's fire. You gonna sample that shit? <laughs> hey. The slutty vegan ladies here. You ain't know I can hit that shit like that. You know how they got like Greg Street at six o'clock? Like mm -hmm. that could be the intro. The slutty vegan ladies here. You low key can sing good. Though. Grabbing on some. Grubbing on some. You heard what I said, Dean? The slutty vegan ladies here. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm doing well, man. The universe is good to me. The universe is good to me. Feeling real universal today, real yeah. playerific. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm proud of y'all. How y'all greet this podcast? Hey man, this podcast right here, we needed it. We needed it. Listen. This podcast right here is for black ladies that braid hair out the house, but it looked like you went to the shop. I love that shit. You feel me? It's for niggas who done ever had to help take their girl micro braids down and try to save her edges. I got an Come idea on. for you. Come you feel on. Me? Listen, y'all fucking commercial. You need to be in the camera doing just like this background, and it and it's almost like you're gonna say something like unexpected, but you saying that like, this is for all the ladies, blah, blah, and at the end, all you say is 85 South, and then you walk away, and then the beat follow you walking away, and that's the commercial, and then whatever time y'all do, what y'all do, once a week? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, once a week, boom. I thought you was about to say, I'm sitting here taking a girl braids down as I do it. <laughs> now that's, that's the type of shit I fuck with. Or maybe you could be saying the scenarios, and then it pans to the person actually doing that thing that you talking about. Yeah. Cause I actually get, I well, got like somebody it. detail in their car. You feel exactly. me? And you got somebody detail in their car. That would actually be fire. Hell yeah. You know who this podcast is for? Nope. People who eat slutty vegan with real French fries. <laughs> You'll pull up and get a slutty vegan burger, but you gonna get some McDonald's fries with that. Thing. What? It's counterproductive. You got fries, don't you? I have fucking fries. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what? I was about to say. The fuck? You, get vegan and you get slutty vegan fries. And my fries taste good. I know. You black. You a black lady. I know you make good hey, shit. Listen, you know, that's what I know. That, that, that ain't true. Well. I know black people that cannot cook. I haven't had it yet because I live in LA and everybody keep do? telling me about it. I used to live in LA. But from what I hear is the seasoning. I realize it is. white people, they fuck with flavors. Yes. They should be flavored. Wait, wait, white people? White people should be flavored, not seasoned. Oh, okay, I was about to say. And they barely be flavored. Yeah, yeah they make them chips yeah. is fucking Philly cheesesteak flavored. Yeah. Nigga, they ain't no seasoning. But seasoning, seasoning is sweet, mm -hmm. salty, spicy at the same time. Talk your shit. You know what I'm saying? It's winter, spring, summer, and fall. All of that. Like, it ain't just winter time and then skip over something. <laughs> no. It's like, really. But for real, for real, it's, the food is good, but it ain't even the food that would make people come. <laughs> I'm gonna see this for when we start. Though. Okay. Okay. It's I like insane. how you, this is a great intro. <laughs> a great intro. You know that, right? Listen. Where you from? I'm from Baltimore. Like Baltimore. the exact location. We want to know the street. What was, Avenue. Avenue. what was your I'm local sorry. corner <laughs> store? <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. My local corner store was Jimmy D's. And do you know they selling my wrap snacks in the store that's on the corner on the block that I fucking grew up on? That's you going to get deep? Fast? That's crazy. Like, that's that's like a full need circle. Slow claps. Give me a faster clap or something. Hold that shit up. No, these niggas like this, like. Wait a minute. You the only rapper that's not a that's rapper. That's not without, a rapper. That's got a rap snack. I'm not a producer, but I got a fucking artist in the label now. You ain't bring us no chips. 
No. I'd have but had if you go to that out. Chevron up the street, <laughs> I'm that shit. You know, if you go to the anymore. fucking Exxon around the corner, you might find something. Uh, you know what? This would be a great time to do. What? Say, welcome back to the 85 South <laughs> Show. Wow. I am your man, Carlos Miller. I got to say it again because the nigga been gone for so long. Welcome back. Clayton. Hey man, I'm back to back. You back to back, back to back. back. You understand what I'm saying? Man, you've been kicking ass all across the world. How you feeling today, player? Man, I can't feel no better than being surrounded by the trap and Ooh. all this. You got very special guests in here. Very special guests. All this success. Yes. Man, you already know. You know and you love them. <laughs> Uh, Come on. You know, we're changing the world one step at a time, so we had to bring the boss, the boss lady in here to kick it with us. Miss Pinky. Slay Yay. Hey, I'm just happy to be here, How surrounded you doing? by all of this aroma. How you doing? <laughs> First of all, that's all I want to say. Sage. Um, I'm doing really good. I'm doing better than good, actually. Talk your shit. Um, I'm in a really good space. Yes, you are. Um, if you would have told me my life would have looked like this two years ago, I would have believed you, but I would have laughed, and then I would have believed you. The but, crazy part is, is like, I probably did somewhere down the line. Yeah. You probably said some good um, positive shit. But yeah, nah, man, like, I'm just, I'm just present. I'm the most present that I've ever been. And yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just here. That's what's up, man. Well, yeah. congratulations on all the great things that you've accomplished. Thank you. You Come know, on. and you've taken your brand so far. Thank you. You made it a, a worldwide thing now. It's, it's a phenomenon. Like, yeah, that's exactly it what it is. They talk like, about it on the West Coast. Listen, yes. the, the fact that it's a phenomenon, right? Yeah. This literally, I was in my bedroom smoking a blunt. Yeah. And I came up with this idea. That's how I came up with this What? One. Yeah. <laughs> literally, I was, and I'm not a smoker smoker, but I would do my thing, but like, I was literally just thinking, I'm an idea machine, so I'm always coming up with ideas anyway. So I was sitting in the bed, and it hit me like a light bulb. I'm like, slutty vegan. And you know, y'all that came up with a really good idea that's so good, you ain't telling nobody? Yeah. yeah. That's what, this was what it was. So you came up with the name first, and then yeah. was like? I came up with the name first. Wow. I was just sitting there. I used to live in LA. Yeah. Um, so just to give y'all some background, right? Like, my background is in TV. So okay. I was a television producer, casting director, like I- Well, where you was at when I was out there trying to get them goddamn roles, man? God damn, now you, now you goddamn serving up vegan food. I probably food. saw your headshot though. No, but um, yeah, nah, so when I came to Atlanta, it, it's just amazing how something that's just a bedroom idea, I, I saw it through, and because I saw it through now, Slutty Vegan is a household name, so like, that is the dopest shit ever to me. Before you even get to that part, let me ask you, why did you go from LA, from LA to Atlanta? Like, why'd you pick Atlanta? So, I went to college in Atlanta. Okay. I went to um, Clark Atlanta University, and after I, okay. Yeah, yeah, HBCU, <laughs> HBCU. After I graduated. I rolled through there a few times. Oh, I shit went looked, like, looked like a lot of education was going on. <laughs> they was learning like, their ass off. Big education, boy. Big yeah, education. Yeah, big learning, big learning studying. Just <laughs> <They're> learning <laughs> and studying, my boy. You feel me? But yeah, nah. So I graduated from um, CAU and I ain't had no, I'm, t I'm telling you this story for a reason, right? So I ain't have no job lined up, but it was something called Teach for America and it was like, just take it. It was in the middle of the recession. So I took it. This was the first time and the last fucking time in my life that I ever did something that I didn't totally want to do in my spirit. So I right. went out to Houston for five days and I was out there. I'm like, I'm not no teacher. I can't do this. Like I'm a free thinker. I'm abstract. I can't do it and nothing against kids, but I knew that I wanted to teach in other areas. So I left there and that was like the best decision of my life because it propelled me to say, you know what? I'm packing up my bags and I'm moving to LA. I'm going to be an actress. So I moved to LA and you know that dream when you go to LA, everybody want to be an actress, it don't work out for everybody. So that didn't work out for me. <laughs> hey, hey, you talking about you go to the audition and the motherfucker that you know finna get the part already. Yeah. That, so Nigga, it's Denzel Washington Jr. <laughs> you stupid. <do that. laughs> what the fuck am I even doing here? Right. But um, that ain't work out for me. So I, um, one of my sorority sisters was like, listen, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to work in TV. Long story short, I was good at it because I like to run my mouth. So I was working in TV. Um, I moved to New York City um, to work in TV again. And then I got a call to work at the Maury Show as a producer. So I was there for almost three years. Um, yes. The, you got a memory flow yes. from the Maury Show? Yes. Damn. Yeah. Come so, on, man. I love that show. Yeah, so I learned a lot from that show. A lot of what I do with Slutty Vegan, I really learned from the Maury show to keep it a buck. Shut your ass. Yeah, I what swear. You, what you learned from Just the Maury? Just a lot. Listen, that, that wow factor, <laughs> like you got, not that. I want to know. I want to know. 
I want to know. I didn't wow, say listen. shit. The paycheck is well, not I'm yours. Right. Listen, when well, you realize <laughs> shock value is what grabs people's attention. And if you can shock a motherfucker, they, you got their attention. You could teach them or show them or tell mm. them whatever you want to tell them. Right, right, so right. I learned that working at Maury's show. So long story short, after I left Maury, I opened up my first restaurant called Pinky's Jamaican and American Restaurant. And that was in Harlem, New York, lying down, a, down the block. Ain't know nothing about a restaurant. Had that for two years. Restaurant caught on fire. Lost that. I'm fast tracking this story. Um, lost that restaurant. And I was fucked up. I was depressed. I lost my money. I got evicted. I lost my car. I lost everything. And here I am. I'm an overachiever. I've been hustling since I was young. Like, I was throwing parties at 14 years old, selling McChickens in high school for $2 after buying it for $1. So I've always been a hustler. You flipped the McChicken. Yes, I did. <laughs> Look, I tell that story all the time. Right. Yes. Damn. I would, on my lunch break in the cafeteria on 7th period, I would go to McDonald's and I would pay a dollar for a McChicken and I would come back and sell them for $2 because guess what? Everybody <laughs> want to eat. They don't want to eat the cafeteria food. I was just always thinking ahead of everybody awesome. else. So anyway, so after the restaurant burned down, I got a great opportunity to work on um, a TV show uh, on the OWN Network as a supervising producer first, and then I eventually got promoted as a casting director. Right. So while I was in LA, they called me like, Pinky, you wanna go to Atlanta, be on the ground? The guests wanna talk to you? I'm like, sure, I'll do it. I was only supposed to be out there for three months. And three months turned into two years, and I still got a whole one bedroom apartment storage right now in LA that I'm paying $250 for. for it. Free, you can have it. I What's just gotta get rid of it. What's in there? It's bullshit at this point. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, this was the, this was it's a one. <laughs> this was before some shit, right? But it was a one, it's a one bedroom apartment. But that's how I got to Atlanta, and I came up with the idea, and I just started researching. Right, I just right. researched everything, and and to be honest, I didn't expect it to pop like how it's popping now. That shit popped. But those are the things that pop the most, right? It's the things that you like. You think like, oh, it's gonna do good, but it's probably a line right now. Yeah. Yeah. Why close at 9 o'clock? But it's, it's been a line all day. It's a line for the morning. Yeah, yeah. tomorrow line. We're waiting for the yeah. <laughs> And we two years in. <laughs> Niggas is out there. I'm going to go and chill. <laughs> and Niggas waiting for the sandwich like it's Nigga, morning. I'm second. I, when I wake up, I, I know I'm second. second. <laughs> that's how they be, though. But that's a good feeling that you know that you got that, that level of brand trust with people. Yeah. And people authentically support you and they want to see you win. So they're going to stand out in the rain, in the snow. They're going to make sure that they got their laptops and their kids to make sure they support you. So... Like, that, to me, is the most humbling thing ever, because two years later, people are like, how you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm covered. I'm blessed. Yeah, like, God right. is good. Yeah. So, yeah. That's the, and the way you told it was like, you could tell you to work to Hollywood, because you told it like the season. Right. You told it like, I can go watch that shit on Netflix. Like, ooh, I'm at the part where the shit burnt down. That shit was <laughs> fucked up. Shit no, burnt down in Harlem. Listen. Like, no flex. I really wanted, I was hoping you was a part of me. Like, I'm bringing that shit back just to get back. Like, you know, like. Yeah. That Jamaican restaurant? Oh, you know what's crazy? Um, I'm actually working on a couple concepts right now, too. And a Jamaican concept is one of them that I'm doing for my mom. It's called the restaurant. The restaurant. My mom's a Rastafarian, so it ain't restaurant. It's the restaurant. All Ito Jamaican food. You know what? we be eating Rasta pasta. You know how many black restaurants got Rasta what's pasta? Up? What's up? Y'all can hard. come eat there, too. It's going to be in a lot. Get the jerk <laughs> chicken hidden, folks. That's coming, too. But yeah, so you know, it's been a beautiful feeling. That's dope to hear because it's not overnight. Like you really yeah. laid the story out there, and everything ain't work out the first time. And people think it's just supposed to whatever they throw out the first time is supposed to catch fire immediately. Yeah. yeah, but that's why I tell people like everything happened for a reason. It's supposed to happen that way. My father did 22 years in prison. He was one of the yeah. biggest drug dealers in Baltimore. So if he was in my life, things probably would have been totally different. Which, why you pause like that? Because he trying to think if you know. That's a lot of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw Los looking like, I wonder but if. Look, what's so friend. crazy, he got life and he, he ended up doing 22 years. So they gave him life. So the, I was born on December 8th, 1987. The day that I was born was the day that he was being sentenced. But my story was written. So it wasn't overnight. I needed uh, that to, I know it yeah. sounds crazy now, but 2020, if that would have never happened, I probably wouldn't have even had this business because my life path would have probably been totally different. You might not have had that hustle, yeah. I probably wouldn't have had that hustle. You know why mm -hmm. I really went hard? Because I saw my Jamaican immigrant mother working four jobs to make sure we had everything that we need. And then my father in jail calling me, telling me to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, telling me to read these books and learn about stocks and bonds. Mm -hmm. So then yeah. I'm like, all right, I, I got to work hard so that my mother ain't got to work this hard. That's corny. Right? And then I also got to prove to my father that I could be that entrepreneur that he dreamed of, but I'm going to do it the legal way and win. Yeah. So, yeah. That shit, boy, that's, that's a, hard. That's, that's a feel-good story. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's hard. 
Yeah. Like where you that's where you get your inspiration in. Like what would you what advice would you give somebody who needs some inspiration right now? Who feel like they may have the talent to, to do something big. Like they watch the show and they ask me all the time and like, shit, you one of the people that inspire me just knowing Thank that you, you hustle like you hustle and it's like what advice would you give the people who watch it and want to know more about where you, how you do this shit and how you take over the world? You got to be so confident in everything that you do. I tell them Let all the fucking time, man. Listen, you know why people right. love Slutty Vegan? Why? Because they love me. Tell them. And you know how I know that? Because I'm so real. I'm authentic. How you see me now, how I'm showing up, this is me everywhere. People may think I'm crazy, I'm different, but this is how I show up. And I believe in myself so much, I'll cut somebody off if they don't believe in my dream. But I'm so passionate about my dream that, like, people absorb that, right? So if I step out the room, if I'm in here with you for 50 minutes, if I walk away and you ain't learned something, then something is wrong. Say right. room one more time. Really? <laughs> You know I fuck with the Baltimore accent. You know I fuck with it. If I hear it, I got to hear it again. But you got to be so confident <laughs> that people who want to give an opportunity, that got access to resources, they're not going to give you the opportunity because they feel like the product is good. Fuck that. Mm. They're going to give you the opportunity because they see how confident you are in yourself. So they're going to say, damn, I might as well bet on this. They believe in yeah. their own self. Yeah. So you got to have that confidence. I tell people all the time, every single room I go in, I own my room. I'm not walking in a room that I don't own it. If I don't own it, I don't need to be there. And when I say own my room, I mean I'm captivating audiences. Like I'm getting my message across. Like I'm confident I walk in a room, you're going to turn your head or something I say out of my mouth is going to make you want to do business with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But gotta you got to be confident. You got to start owning or goddamn hey man. owning your room, I nigga. Own, That's I what own. you need to start. <laughs> you you, you act like you're scared to you, own the goddamn room. You do what she said about getting If you do it, I'll do it too. You do. <laughs> Fuck you. You need to start hey, owning listen, the room, man. Shout out to Baltimore, okay? Accent ain't never going nowhere. Goddamn right it ain't. <laughs> hey, you no, you got to make them want to leave the room with you. Like, yeah. motherfuckers, like, them boring ass, like, meetings that you be yeah. having, that shit be like, man, them motherfuckers got to be like, where the fuck she finna go? She sucks. <laughs> Like, yeah, they gotta want yeah, to follow But you out. really gotta own your room and be confident in that. And I feel like confidence can get you through any door that you want to. There's like, I don't, I don't believe in the word no. Like, I get what I want because I'm confident. I'm a man. I can't say that in today's times, but yeah, because no means no. <laughs> no don't mean no. Listen, you changing that narrative. No, no don't mean no. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Man. Not that way. No need to know that way. All the way. That motherfucker yeah. did that for No, okay. Purpose. Let's man, let's get the fuck out of here. Them <laughs> folks said no. All right. They said no. Get up stuck. I heard a mm-mm. <laughs> Somebody said, mm-mm. That's worse than no. <laughs> hey, can I get a mm-mm? No. Oh. oh my God. Get the fuck oh out of here. Wasting these people's time. <laughs> what the nigga say? Mm-mm. <laughs> He didn't say no, no, the no, nigga man. said, mm-mm. He said, mm-mm. Mm-mm, shit, It's in the same family, you know. Mm-mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. man, please, please tell me you watched the Brandy and Monica uh, verses. I did. Come on. Tell the truth, that was the best one. Out of all the verses. No, so it, it was the best one. That was the best one. That no, shit was lit. Everybody was in that bitch. It was the best one. It was I'm the saying best. it like in there like it was a club. It Nigga, was that bitch one. was lit. Oh, it was, everybody was in there now. That it bitch was, was star studded. Monica before she did it, so it was good. Oh, so, so Monica was charged up. Oh, yeah, slutty she, vegan. She yeah. ran off slutty vegan. She was on a slutty vegan she, Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? She ate the slutty vegan before the battle? Mm-hmm. What she had? I don't know what she had. I think she had a one night stand. We took, we put it on our Instagram. Man, oh man, yeah. come on, man. That's why them boots was looking long. For real. Okay, so first of all, them I boots and pants. I thought they was poops. Oh, I thought they were pants. I thought pants, they was boots and pants put together. I thought she had on some poops. You stupid. Them boots? Oh, them not the same no, ones. No, that's not though. the one she, she got some. Okay, I was trying. To but yeah, nah, you know. I, the world is wondering you, are those pants and boots you, right there now. There was a lot of things happening in there, so I'm gonna talk about the positive the positives of them too. I think that they were the experience when you think about uh, black women who can't get along, right? So for years they had this feud right. and America knew about it, right? And we actually like thrived off of that knowing that. When I say we, I'm talking about the people. Like like we made it a thing. Like Randy and Monica, Boy Is Mine, always like divisiveness. It made the song better actually. It made the song better. Right. But it all, yeah, yeah that song, it was like, oh, <clears throat> that shit was real. 
But it just became real. But I didn't know it. But it, it was real. But it was real petty. Yeah, it was petty. I don't even. I still don't know what they was paying for. But anyway, to see them in the same room together that brings so many people together. Owning it. What? They was owning the what? My, so the let room. me tell you, they was owning the room. So I, in my mind, I'm like, damn. I wonder if they made some money off of this because, like, you got 1.2. Like, how 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 are you going to bring these people to drive traffic to what you're trying to offer? They trending on Apple Music. All yeah, that streams good. went up. Yeah. You know, if you, I done downloaded the album too. Exactly. The album on because the album. they played a lot of music that, you know, took us to a point, you know, a certain pre teen teen era. Like for me anyway, you know, I'm thinking like shit, I was being real mannish when this was out. Oh man. Sitting up oh, in my room, I was fingering <laughs> already. <laughs> I was already fingering, oh, no, dipping and dabbling, and said, knowing what was happening. <laughs> Monica was 13 when On she made bus. some hits. She was 13. 13, but she talking grown 13, as fuck. Right. Her 15 shit a still hit A 13 year old do that now? On air? Oh, it's a controversy. It's going down. Not if they sing it but like she, made some she did. Hey, man. We didn't even know how old she was, I don't think. We didn't care. We didn't care. We was like, no. who is this old lady singing like this? Yeah. Monica <laughs> is a once in a it. lifetime <laughs> talent. Let me tell you how real she is. I'm hosting the shit show. In the hood. I, yeah. New face was there. Check this out. Give the people. Now look. Just set the tone for the shit show. Okay, the shit, shit show is the ghetto. We, we got it that way on purpose. It is the ghetto talent show where you can come out and do whatever the fuck you think the ghetto going to like. If the ghetto <laughs> like it, they show you so much love, it's, it's like you good right then. But if they hate that shit, they throw shit at you. Like literally little fuzzy shits. They throw them at you and they got a doo-doo that <laughs> come shit. out. What? It's the craziest shit up. Shout out to the shit show, man. Follow the shit show on if you want to see some of the clips. So look, new face is there. We just heard Monica was coming. We like, all right, man, Monica ain't coming to this ghetto ass shit. It's too ghetto. Two chains come, 21 Savage, like ghetto shit. Right. All hood niggas, right. and they just standing up, get that nigga the fuck out of here. <laughs> so we hear, we heard Monica was coming, bro. She just walked, like, she pulled up in the fucking Rose Rush or some shit, walked straight to the stage. The microphone was already ready. I don't know who hooked the microphone up. She had her own microphone and shit was hooked up. Had all them hood niggas in there crying, finished the song, chilled up in that muff. I was like, this is the craziest yeah, no, shit she's ever. Dope. Post it up. She's a vibe. She That's why real. she's been so relevant for so long. Think right. about it. Hey, Keith. You know, I did my first toasted butter cartoon in the bathroom wall. Mm hmm, it's still there. I know. Someone drew a dick and toast mouth. Oh, well, I was drunk. Okay, I thought that was you. I'm an artist. It's important to preserve a little mystery. You're not mysterious. Lenny Kravitz. He's mysterious. Lenny Kravitz, Batman. Know your way to the top. Newspapers, TV show, movie deals. So you're Keith Knight? I am. It's funny, I didn't think you'd be tall. Happens all the time. I just love your work and what you say with it. Why is it that as people of color, we're always having to stand for something in our work? Just the cartoonist. Because the world's a racist place. And that's why I keep it light. Keep it light? Yeah, keep it light. Why? Don't move. Central, we the suspect, suspect. in question. What? Six foot tall. You have the wrong guy. Copy that. This isn't the suspect. I can't believe they did us like that. Are you cool? I ain't got it. I ain't got it. Over here, man. Boy, I ain't got it. Mr. Policeman did a number on you, didn't he? Now you can be his. It's just like having a superpower. Yeah, no, if no. If crazy was a superpower. Oh, boy. What's really going on, bro? Earlier, I got my ass beat by the police. Now, I'm seeing things. Houston, we have a problem. Man, you woke. Let's pop bottles, make cupcakes. Did you guys lighten my photo? I look like Sammy Sosa. Uh, Am I too black for my own comics? No, trust me. No one's gonna ever accuse you of being too black. I'm sorry, what? Hmm? Down here, my brother. That's right. I'm a talking trash king. This is all wrong. I tell you what's wrong. Those man bun, co-opting, gentrifying devils. So you have about 30 minutes till they trap you in the sunken place. Well, it feels like I'm already there. If you were me, what would you do? You let this out, so you have to deal with it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You know what to do. Boy, I ain't got time for this is that moment in the Matrix. Do I take the red pill or the blue pill? I've got both in my room if you want to experiment. Boy, I ain't got time. 
think about all the people, the Ushers, the Monicas, like the Brandies, all the people that have been relevant for as long as we can remember. There's right. a reason. Right. They had and that you know what? Factor. Atlanta got a lot of people who are like super celebrities, but you would for real see them pull up and grab some wings at the yeah. hood yeah. spot and say what's up and, you know it really be out there with the a people i think that really that put way. yeah i like i really feel like that really push like <laughs> certain people to a whole nother spot when like the people see you and it's like exactly. it ain't no it's just where you can be in your city and people see you everywhere We're like i saw mama get yeah. green branch and you know it's like you that's get the whole more shit. respect from people when they feel like they can touch you and i'm not talking about like touch you like yeah you know, not when you you're real but like when you real people love that they're going to support it they're going to back it they're going to represent and defend you right and yeah. every single thing that you do so you know that's why you see it in atlanta a lot like, that is that. an actual face you could put with the it's yeah. like you ain't the album cover yeah. you ain't your face when i click spot like i saw this motherfucker out and then you're gonna say whatever the fuck you saw him doing mm. tell the truth didn't you think ray j was gonna show up man he did ray but j we thought he was gonna do a song but i'm he saying we thought he was tell the truth i thought he was gonna do a song no, i thought he, he probably wanted to so bad that's why brandy like look you trying to get your time on the camera he man, wanted to he probably wanted to man brandy was Bruh, if they ever have ray j on versus he gotta do that shit from floyd mayweather's house at the p but who, who is he gonna do a verse it with? don't fucking matter you can put <laughs> anybody up. Ray J winning. <laughs> what? That nigga that had seven careers. Who that nigga was signed to death row. What are you talking about? Hey, what's um... Hey, when that nigga broke his glasses <laughs> on that interview. We got seven <laughs> phantoms outside. What's the, um, what's the guy that just got married to the 19-year-old? Marcus Houston. Him and Marcus Houston can go back and forth. I feel like they got equal amount of hits. Ooh, Marcus Houston no. got so? too many. Because he got Marcus but they, Houston but they, song. They got the then same, Marcus they Houston the same was level. in Immature mm -hmm. and he was in like four yeah, other groups. That would be a bomb ass versus. Yeah. Bomb. I don't know. I don't think he can hang. I don't know. Marcus Houston, <laughs> that don't nigga owned hang. like 90 from like 90 to about 94. Then that nigga left and came back. <laughs> this how cold Marcus Houston is. like they didn't listen to him. This nigga was so was cold. All, that's all they was listening to. This Girl. motherfucker was in a group Immature when he was kids, right? They left a whole nigga out the group and replaced him and just act like everybody that's knew the nigga. Happened, right? Didn't even introduce no, this nigga right. for the longest. That's we right. was like, who is this nigga playing the drums that's not playing the drums? Why does that young nigga have an eye patch on? Is he okay? Where are his parents? Is he okay? Was, did that nigga have an eye? Dead. Where is he? We know Marcus Houston. The nigga got the injured. nigga was in a group with two other motherfuckers. He's what are two other motherfuckers? They ain't got no motherfucking TV one unsung or nothing. I want to know where that nigga is with that eye patch on that was in him. <laughs> How old is that nigga now? And if that eye patch was real, that's the question. Did, what was his eye ever fucked up? Right. Because no, it probably wasn't. He was just a cockeyed. That nigga wasn't was but 12. Yeah, you can't be in a kid group and you got them looking all over the fucking place. Hey, you'd be you surprised. That, that could have been a part of the brand. Yeah, them motherfuckers. Okay. Like, ah, even bro. this way. It's, it's man. <laughs> Hey, Brand, I, shout out to, asked about shout Brandy, out to Brandy too. Brandy get much love. You yeah. asked about Brandy on your shit. I did. I couldn't figure out if those was big pants or she was thick. Listen, I didn't know. Okay, Brandy. I think it was both. She got a lot of ass. Then with some FUBU Platinum jeans, but she got a lot of ass. Brandy went from sitting up in her room to sitting on all that ass. I'm not about to talk to you. Let what were you no. saying? She I'm not about to no, <laughs> she, was, she was looking all chunked out. I'm just no, saying. Brandy had that. I got a lot of fucking money outfit on, and I'm just chilling. Brandy was dressed like Whoopi Goldberg on the view. I got a lot of fucking money. I Brandy got a lot was dressed of money. like Whoopi Goldberg so on the view. I got a lot you? of money. So you so dressed I'm like. Chilling. That's the, okay. Listen, because let me yep. tell you what I learned about people that with money, with money, money, right? And I'm not Even saying Monica food. don't have money, money, right? right? The Steve Jobs, the people, the, the, the big boys, the big fries, these motherfuckers wear the same thing every day. They Beautiful. chillin'. I wear tights every day and sneakers and That's my problem. I wear too many fucking I'm taking all this shit back. All yeah. Back. <laughs> I'm gonna have a closet like a cartoon character. It's gonna be the same <laughs> shit, nigga. I but get burnt up in my shit, I'm gonna go put some more shit on and look just like You know why people do that? Because it prevents brain fog, brain fatigue. So if you run in a company, if you're you an entrepreneur, you ain't it. gotta think about what the fuck you about to put on. God damn right. You now you giving up the game. Moving. Now you giving up game. The game is to be sold and free. It's supposed to be sold. Free. Let me like, let me like that there shit you again. Come on. Now you talking that shit again. Come on, what's up? Put I know up. what you're saying before. Play me some shit, man. God damn it, before she confused me and I beat and bought a goddamn. Vegan turkey sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I see you giving back to the community and shit too. Yeah. That's, That's big. Hard. Yeah. 
A lot of what I do is because of my mom. She, um, I remember growing up, my mother used to have like 10 people living in the house. I had my, I just started living by myself as a grown woman adult. You know what I mean? No. no I'm sense. just saying, if you grew up with 11, 12, 13 motherfuckers in the house, you don't want to, you be like, I don't want to you know be in this is? bitch by myself. At least two of y'all come live with me. Hey, shit. it ain't enough split floor. this family up. This is yes. a pandemic out here. All hey. 11 of y'all can't be in here. Listen, I, like, it was hey. embedded in me. You got to share. This you got community. to. This, That's this black. shit ain't yours. You got to share this shit. Like, give her some. Help somebody else. So I do that in my adult life. So I created a foundation for all the money that I be fucking spending. There you go. And I help people. And, and to me, that's the biggest success. That's bigger than any money that go in my bank account to know that I can utilize my resources to just, just make somebody smile. And that's real. Mm, right. Like, it's almost like I feel like Superman when I can get somebody out of their situation. Right. Because I know that I can do it. And they forever going to remember that, like, damn, like, she helped me get out of my situation and I can see them when that feels good. Let me um, ask you this, because we were talking, I don't know if they caught this, but you were telling me you about to expand and you're going to, you, you're bringing your business to Alabama. Yeah. Talk about that for me, because I'm from Mississippi and it's like, well, just we to see that you see. Well, we were supposed to say that on camera, but now that you yeah. said it. I didn't oh, know if it was shit. too early. I kept it. Oh, shit. Um, well, well, fuck it, just act like I didn't. Anyway, we're here, right. the we're world premiere. What part? Um, Birmingham. Okay. In the ham. Yeah, so basically what my concept is, is I go to underserved communities and food deserts, right? Because I'm not just putting a restaurant to sell burgers and fries in the community, I'm actually helping the community. So I, I go to areas. communities. Yeah, I go, I, rep. Yeah, I go to the areas that, that's not desirable to the average restaurant tour or the average realtor. So I'm buying properties mm -hmm. and putting Slutty Vegan in the properties in wow. these food deserts. And then I'm creating a whole experience and atmosphere around that specific community, right? So Birmingham, I'm dealing directly with the mayor. So now I'm dealing with the mayor of Birmingham to help us get a location for uh, Alabama. So I'm excited about that. Hey, I'm excited Let's about that go. too. Let's go! Look how Marvin Gaye looking at you. He hey, want hey, one. Hey, he want one. Hey, he know what's going he on. He want to taste. I, I want to taste it. If niggas was vegan before they got me, I would have been one too. You know, I know. I know. But yeah, so we expanding. I'm um, I'm opening up 13 locations um, within the next two years. So I got another location that I'm opening up in two weeks. Um, yeah. My business is weatherproof. That's why I say the universe is so good. That's why you gotta be so confident, because even with all the bullshit going on, like I'm still confident and the universe still rewards me. That shit the future. Go black woman. Yeah. That shit the Go future. black, protect black We running black out of meat anyway. You ain't, we, yeah. we ain't gonna be around too much longer anyway. Shit. Yeah. But, the cows but, mad but than I, the motherfuckers. But beyond just the food, right? Like I'm helping people reimagine food, but I'm also up playing the experience. There's so much going on in the world that you come to Slutty Vegan, I'm gonna make you feel good. You gotta come. Can you take him? Can I go? He ain't never been. Why you don't she take him? She said it like that's my daddy and shit. No. Can I take him? Take him? <laughs> she wanna take me to Six Flags. <laughs> Can you I go? Said, you said you don't live here. Pinky said she's gonna take me to Six Flags. Can, can I go? Can he go? You let a nigga come and ask me real quick. <laughs> Why you can't take him? Pinky said she's gonna take us to Six Flags and we go. Uh, Pinky, that is Clayton. You can take Listen, him to fucking. You said you don't live here. I know, but I'm here. I'm here now. I'm here now. Okay, all right, come on. I'm here. He lives okay. by the but, rock, okay? But, he is and it, good. My mama said before, right? By where the rock stay. <laughs> it's over there in the right. general. The area. rock. You know the rock. The rock. <laughs> It ain't even The Rock, The Wrestler. It's just a dude named The Rock. No. Oh, you it's one word, The Rock. The rock. <laughs> you stupid. I'm like, oh, The Rock? OK, cool. Hey, What's that? The fucked up part is, in like four years, it's going to be a high school player doing the interview. His name going to be The, the rock. rock, The Microphone. Watch. It's the Rock, be The Microphone. Right. <laughs> but yeah, you got to come tomorrow. I'm with it. I want you to come. Which one? Which, which one are you on? I know. Oh. You can choose anyone. Anyone? Jonesboro, RDA. All right, I'll go wherever. It's a vibe, whichever one you go to. I'm going to that bad boy. Hey, ain't no way. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. There's some meat in here somewhere. This burger shook some hands with a real burger. It been touched by a real burger. <laughs>